Okay, we're continuing learning <coughs> in the book, which is called Torah Or, which is a book of Hasidic teachings by the first Rebbe of Chabad, Rabbi Schneer Zalman of <coughs> Liadi. And um, it basically comes to explain <coughs> what you should be thinking about God and how to bring this these thoughts into um, <clears throat> into um, to your heart. What the, what you should what you, what you should be, be believing that God is. How you should understand these beliefs, and how <clears throat> you can take it to your heart. That's chachma bin and das chabad. Chachma means belief, faith <clears throat> in something that's totally above understanding, faith. Bina means trying to understand this as much as possible. That's Bina, Chachma, Bina. And that means to try to take it to your heart, <clears throat> to realize that it's really true, that God really is creating us and enlivening us and, and uh, directing the whole world constantly. He's really the king of the world. He's creating the whole world all the time. <clears throat> He's providing for everyone. He answers our prayers. He alone, <clears throat> to pray to anything else, is a big mistake. <clears throat> <clears throat> and on the other hand, not to have love <clears throat> and fear of God, it means that it means to, to uh, not to uh, uh, how do you say express our potential. Potential of man is <clears throat> to love the Creator of the universe, to use his emotions properly. Excuse me. <clears throat> Excuse me. So that's what this. All the ranks of Hasirut are. They have the proper concept of God and then to have the proper understanding of that concept as much as possible. And then to take this to heart, to make it really real, that it should change our emotions <clears throat> and our attitude and our thoughts, our speech and action, etc. So here we go. <clears throat> so this week we're learning in the Torah <clears throat> about the building of the Tabernacle. The tabernacle was the prototype of the holy temple. <clears throat> and the main point of this uh, tabernacle was twofold. One, that God revealed himself to us like he did in Mount Sinai. That was in the Holy of Holies. And two, that we can serve God. <clears throat> That's the rest of the holy temple. <clears throat> so God gives us revelation of himself, like it was in Mount Sinai. But then we have to reciprocate. And then when we do reciprocate, and we utilize this awareness of God that God gives us, this gratitude to God, then we have love of God and fear of God, and we want to do the commandments. And when we do that, then God reacts. God reacts to us. And God gives us a bigger blessing. When God gives us a bigger blessing, then we have more inspiration. The more inspiration we have, the more genuine we can be in doing the commandments. And we give more to the creator. And then God reacts to that. And so it is this dynamic <clears throat> interreaction between us and God. And the Rebbe says that this <clears throat> is <clears throat> uh, demonstrated and, and I wonder how, what is it, personified again? I don't know, it's personified. It's, what is it? It's, it's um, manifested. Oh, oh. In the two statues, the faces of angels that were pounded out from the cover on the ark, right? In the Holy of Holies was this ark. It was this box. <clears throat> on the outside, it was gold. And inside of this box were the tablets that the Jews received on Mount Sinai. And with this tablet, with these, with these tablets was the revelation on Mount Sinai. <clears throat> Namely, God revealed himself to us. God is always the beginner, right? He creates us also. That's no, no, no better beginning than that. 
So God creates us and God gives us this, this awareness and this is, and when we have it, then God wants us to reciprocate, to react. And when we react to God, then God reacts to us. And when God reacts to us, then he expects that we should react to him and agree with it, just like we just finished explaining. So that's these two faces of these cherubs that are on the ark facing one another. <clears throat> right? Let's see, maybe we got a picture over here. We got a picture. Huh? Is it worthwhile to look for the picture? Maybe. Let's, let's see. Oh. Nah, not worthwhile. Okay. Anyway, you remember from yesterday's Torah class, Chumash class. <clears throat> So one of these cherub, one of these faces of the angels was is God's representative of God's <clears throat> revelation, God's inspiration, God's presence <clears throat> coming to us. Something something like it was on Mount Sinai. Because that's why this whole thing was in the Holy of Holies, because the Holy of Holies was a simulation. Was was of, of, of Mount Sinai. Exactly what happened on Mount Sinai. That's where the, the tablets were there. Was God coming to us? And the other one is us coming, reacting back to God. That's the two angels, two faces of these angels, whatever they were, <coughs> facing one the other. And that's serving. We serve God. God loves us. We serve Him. God loves us, etc. Back and forth. Back and forth. <coughs> And that's called peace. Peace means the uniting of two opposites. <laughs> that was in the time when there was the Holy Temple. That was in the time when there was the Holy Temple. Avobat, Mishachar of Beit HaMikdash, when the Temple was destroyed, Nignaz Akruvim, then the Ark with the cover on it, and these two statues of the Keruvim, of these two angels that were pounded out. We'll learn about this today, by the way, in the, in the Chumash class. Come, come to class, we'll see. And these Keruvim, <clears throat> are gone. Nignas of Keruvim, it says they're gone. Where are they gone? It says that there was a king before the destruction of the second temple, of the, of, the, of the first temple. Before the destruction of the first temple, there was a king who knew that the temple was going to be destroyed. And when King Solomon built the temple, he also had this sort of emergency chamber that was put down in, in winding uh, pathways or chamber or, 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 or is it hallways or whatever. Anyway, there's this chamber way, way down under the earth. And there is exactly corresponding to where the temple was. And there is where the tablets are buried. <clears throat> So they're there right now. They were there in the second temple, and they're there right now. So they were hidden. Okay, they're not supposed to be hidden, but they were hidden. So it says now that they're hidden, they don't have the same effect as they did when they were revealed. So what are we going to do now? We, we, it means that it's lost all this reaction and interreaction. At least it's not there in a revealed way. It says that's exactly what King Solomon was hinting at. When he said in his, his one of his masterpieces, right? He wrote the book of, of Proverbs and the book of Ecclesiastes. And he also wrote a very short book, which is called Shir Hashirim, the Song of Songs. And in the Song of Songs, that's what it says. May it only be that you should be like a brother to me. It says that's what King Solomon was, was referring to. That's the request of King Solomon was just voicing the request of the Jewish people in the time of the exile, because he also foresaw or he felt or he was somehow they inspired. He wrote about this terrible time that we're in now when the temples were destroyed. <clears throat> King Solomon was writing his book, a love song between the, God and the Jewish people, the Jewish people and God. The Jewish people when the temple was there, the Jewish people on Mount Sinai, <clears throat> the Jewish people in exile, we're, we're, we're searching for God, and then we give up, and then God starts searching for us. <clears throat> in any case, now we're talking about, this is the one aspect of this longing, which is the Jewish people longing for God and saying, Mi tenchak achli, 
It should only be me. It only be that you will be again a brother to me. Like it was in the time of the Holy Temple. They were like brothers. What does it mean, brothers? <clears throat> brothers mean that it's a what do you say? A, a mutual relationship. They're on the same level. So to speak, God is on our level. He reacts to us. We react to God. God reacts to us. <clears throat> We're on the same level. That's what God put himself into the world. That's the Holy Temple. And we want this to be on a permanent basis. <clears throat> that God should, should <clears throat> respond to our love and that we should feel this response. And then we respond even more. That's what it means, like brothers. We're on the same level. But God also, it says that the when the Jewish people <clears throat> were doing what they were supposed to, it says that they were facing these angels, these uh, statues. They were facing one the other. Interesting thing, it says that when Titus, when oh, I'm sorry, when, uh, when they came into the Holy Temple to the to this to destroy the temple, it says that the the cherubs that the faces they were facing one another it was a sign of love. When the temple was destroyed, it says the these angels were facing other one another, showing that God loves the Jewish people. Now, why was the temple being destroyed? This is because God took it out on the temple and not on the Jewish people. The temple was destroyed, but the Jewish people will never be destroyed. <clears throat> they were punished very severely. There was maybe a greater percentage of Jews were killed in the destruction of the first temple, and then again in the second temple, than there were in the Holocaust. <clears throat> not to minimize the terror and the, the, the tragedy of the Holocaust, <clears throat> but the Holocaust a lot of the Jews weren't affected by the Holocaust. The Jews that lived in, you know, in America or whatever, they weren't affected by the Holocaust. Even the Jews that ran away to Russia, that, that escaped from, from the onslaught of the Nazis, they weren't affected so much by the, by the Holocaust, especially the ones in America and then South America, whatever. They for sure weren't affected. In, the, in, the, in the, the destruction of the temple, all the Jews were affected and were affected even to now to this day, 2,000 years later. Temple was destroyed. So it says, but nevertheless, it says that the statues were facing one another because God, true, he punishes us, but his love never goes away. But nevertheless, it's still the love is not revealed. And that's what we're requesting. God, may it only be that you be like a brother to me, that we that you react to what we do and we see your reaction. I know Al Now we don't have the holy temple, we don't have the sacrifices. A lot of the commandments that we had, we don't have, but we do have the Torah. The Torah is the same Torah. The Torah is the exact same Torah as it was at Mount Sinai. The Jewish people have been reading publicly from the Torah since it was given at Mount Sinai, 3,330. This year, I'll give us four, 34 years. And nonstop, the Jews have been reading in public. You make one mistake in the reading of the Torah, in public, everybody jumps on you. <clears throat> Never stop. Even when the Jews were driven into exile, they took the Sefer Torahs with them. Never was a time when they weren't reading the Torah. So that we have the same Torah as we do now. Kamayim Rizal, like it says, the rabbi, Mishachar Beit HaMikdash, since the Holy Temple was destroyed, God does not have in this world a dwelling, Ella, except Dalet Amo Shalalacha. It's called the, the, the four Amos, of halacha, the, the 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 area surrounding a person who learns Torah, the area surrounding a person who learns Torah, let's say six feet on each side, something like that. What does that mean? That's what it says afterwards. <clears throat> who will give you like a brother to me, nursing from the breasts of my mother? And there was two brothers, they both nursed from the breasts of the same mother, right? They're, they're, if they're maternal brothers. <clears throat> and that's what God is saying. Now we are, <clears throat> how can we all be brothers with God now? How can we and God be on the same level? That's from the Torah. Namely, by nursing from the breasts of your mother. What's that? That's the, that's the oral Torah. That's the oral Torah. When God gave the Torah on Mount Sinai, 
I mean, if you open up a book of the Torah, it, the whole thing is not understandable at all. Even if you read a translation, that translation came because there was an interpretation of the Torah. Without the interpretation of the Torah, you don't even know how to read Hebrew. The, the words don't make any sense. You don't know what's an aleph and what's a base and what's a gimel. This was all handed down. And there has to be an oral Torah. There has to be an explanation of the Torah. God purposely gave it that way. When Moses was on Mount Sinai for 40 days, so God gave him the Torah, and he gave him a lot of the explanation of the Torah, and then he gave him principles by which later rabbis would learn more laws from the Torah, what God was hinting at in the Torah. That's what the whole Talmud is about. Great rabbis, it says most of them had the power to raise the dead. And they discussed what does God want, exactly what does God want the Jewish people to do. That's the laws of the Torah. That's when God gave the Torah. He gave laws. When we learn the Talmud, and we learn these different arguments, the different arguments which are in the Talmud are not personal arguments by in, very intelligent people. These are all the opinions of God. All of them are the words of the living God. That's what the Talmud is. The Talmud brought godliness even into arguments, even into human intelligence. That's what we just finished last week, learning Mishpatim. Right? Mishpatim means logical laws. Laws which are, what about the details? How exactly, how much are you supposed to pay? Right? If I steal somebody's car, right, I have to, and they catch me with the car, I give the car back, I have to, you have to pay double. That's a law in the Torah. You have to give it back for sure. What, why pay double? Because that's what God wants. How do you know that? It says in the Torah. How do you know it can explain what the Torah? That's what the rabbis are there to explain. That's the whole Talmud. That the, that the Talmud is the revelation of the wisdom and the will of God, really. Hari, if so, in came a person that he understands a law, so he grabs and understands the wisdom of God. Eternal wisdom of God right now is, is running in my mind, in my brain, in my thoughts. That God is the knower and God is the knowledge, etc. Usually when a person knows something, so there's me, I'm the person who knows, and then there's the object of my knowledge, right? Let's say this book that I'm reading, the Talmud, and then there's the aspect of awareness, of knowledge. It could be that I'm there and the book is there, but let's say I'm and I'm, I'm, I'm concentrating on something else, thinking about something else. So I can't. So there's three things involved. When I know something, there's me, there's the object of my knowledge, and then there's the knowledge that joins the two of them together, the, 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 the awareness. Well, by God, it doesn't work that way. By God, the world is not separate from God. So God, it's not that God is the knower, and then there's a world that God knows, and then there's the knowledge in between that connects them. No. It says that God is the knower, the knowledge, who are you, dear? God is the knower, he is the knowledge, etc. It's all one. When you learn the Torah, that's where that that's where this unity is manifested. You get ideas in your mind that are actually God's ideas. These are not the ideas of Rabbi Akiva or of Hillel and Shammai. These are the ideas of God creating, etc. Just the fact is, so is everybody. Everyone in the world is a miraculous creation of God. But that's what's called, comes from God's external speech, external speech. The God's internal speech, for God's thought, that's the Torah. <clears throat> that's where everything is one. Okay, and therefore, when a Jew learns Torah, that's what these boys are doing when they sit and they learn Talmud all the day. A Jew is supposed to learn Talmud all, all the day. All, they're supposed to learn Talmud as much as possible, every moment of the day, if he can. Okay, <clears throat> therefore, Nikra it's called by means of this, Achim. The Jewish people and God are called brothers. Shemakablim shneim that both of them receive from the same source. Shahu, which is Chachman being a law, God's upper wisdom and God's upper understanding. So God, as He comes into this world and He has emotions, He loves us, etc. That's that aspect of God that He's in the world. Well, <clears throat> so to speak, that aspect of God that's in the world receives from the Torah. Just like now, this is Kabbalistic ideas terms. We said that God has, God creates man in His image, right? So God has an image. That's what it says. That God creates man in His image. So it must be God has an image. But we know God does not have an image. God is infinite. 
So why does it say in the Torah that we're created in God's image? So it says, as God relates to the world, God, so to speak, has an image. And this image of God is the way that God acts and reacts to the world. That's mainly God's seven emotions. That's why the world was created in seven days. God could have created the world in one instant. <laughs> exactly. The time is a creation. So it didn't take, it wouldn't have to take any time whatsoever to create God. <laughs> to create, for God to create the world, I'm sorry. For God to create the world. Time is the creation. And what do you mean didn't God took seven days to create the world? God created the seven days themselves, the time created. Why did he take seven? Because seven is the is is the, <clears throat> the spiritual form of God's emotions. It's called zeranth in small faces. That's God's seven emotions. God's seven emotions, this re <clears throat> this is also the seven different types of the Jewish people. That's symbolized by the menorah, by the, the seven sticks of the menorah in the in, of the uh, what's it called, the candelabra, the candles in the in the holy temple. Seven lamps or whatever. They were on, on these stems. <clears throat> so it says they receive also from God's wisdom, Avaim. That's what's called God's wisdom. <laughs> it says that's what the time of the Jewish people in now we're in exile. We don't have the Holy Temple, but we do have the Torah. And because we do have the Torah, when we learn the Torah, even the most simple ideas in the Torah, we're connected. We have in our mind the, the wisdom, the thoughts, the will of God. And so to speak, we and God, as God is in the world with the Jewish people, become on the same basis. We both receive from this Chachma and Bina. That's what it means, nursing, what King Solomon hinted at, that we should be brothers nursing from the breasts of our mother. <clears throat> that namely both... We and God are on the same level because we put God, so to speak, into our mind when we learn the Torah. Zeu, and this is <clears throat> Zeu. So, so it is. I'm sorry. When you learn the Torah, you grasp what's called God's wisdom and God's understanding. Zeu. That's why the Torah is called Chalav. That's why the Torah is called milk. Like it says, Lahu Scharu Tzayin V'Chalav. It says wine and milk. Kamoshal there of mushal, just like in a way of example, Havla, a child. Excuse me. Just like on, in a way of example, a child. Excuse me one second. Okay. I just want to see where the source is. One moment, please. I'm sorry, I should have looked this up before, but I didn't. Uh, 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 here we go. <clears throat> here we go. Excuse me one moment. Excuse me. <clears throat> oh, uh, there it is. Um, eh, there it is. Here it is, one minute. It's a puzzle in Isaiah. It's a sentence in Isaiah, chapter Nun Hey. You want to look it up. The, the Torah is called God's milk. It's called milk. Yain v'chalav. Zeo, that's why the Torah is called milk. Like it says, Lachu Shivru, Yain v'chalav. Kamo, the Torah is called wine and milk, just like a child. Billy does so when he's born. He is ultimately very small. What does he eat? He can't eat bread. What does he eat? By means of Yanika Sokhalov, by means of him drinking the milk of his mother, Ms. Godly Nevorov, his limbs grow, he grows, his body grows. Began the Shalmu Bomochin, Yanika, and also his mind grows. Lochi, and therefore, Matila Daber, therefore, he can begin to speak and to go walk. The milk, Kacha and the Shalmu, is also the souls. Before the souls are born, before the souls put into the body, first of all, it was in the level of being like a fetus. It was a state of being pregnant. In what's called this level of <clears throat> the lower bina, anyway, so a spiritual level. 
But that's what it says. Chai Hashem Asher Amarati Lepanav. God is alive that I stood before him. The Yuridas and the the, 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 the the descent of the soul coming into the world, right? Coming into the world. I think this is Elijah the prophet said this, that I stood in front of him, the God, the Yuridas and the the soul coming into the world, <clears throat> Misham <clears throat> into Bria Yitzir The soul starts off in this world of what's called Atzilus. The, the highest godly uh, the dimension, and then it comes down into the world. When it's in this godly dimension, it's sort of like a fetus in the womb of its mother, totally united. When it comes down into the physical world to be put into a body, that's called giving birth. Right? The soul is giving birth. Not only the body is giving birth, but also the soul is born, so to speak, it comes into the world. That's what it means. That's what it means. Today I gave birth to you. What does it mean? That the Torah is called milk. And as soon as the child is born, he drinks milk. And this milk uh, uh, nourishes and makes grow all of the limbs of his soul. The Ramach Evarim, the 248 limbs of the soul. Which that corresponds to the 248 limbs of the body that to this very day, I don't know exactly what they are. It includes the heart and the brain and this and the lungs. I've never seen a list of what these 248 limbs of the... There's 248 limbs in another place in, in Oolot, but that's talking about the bones. How many bones? In any case, there are 248 limbs of the body which exactly correspond to the 248 commandments of God, which that corresponds to the 248 aspects of God's will which are put into these commandments. But it all depends on the Jewish people doing the commandments. So when the child is born, and this can be a, a child being born, this is for referring to the Jewish people now in the time of exile. The Jewish people now in the time of exile, we are like a, a newborn baby, <clears throat> totally helpless. And what makes us grow now is we can't eat bread, we can't eat this, milk. What's milk? Milk is learning the Torah. Learning the Torah. When that does, it nourishes our soul. And this is the 248 limbs of the soul. Okay, here's one way of figuring out this 248. Is This is the 10 spherot, the 9 spherot, I'm sorry. The 9 spherot of godliness. Sometimes they say you leave out malchut, sometimes you leave out the top one. 9 times 9, each one contains 9. <clears throat> Nine times nine is 81. Times three. It says Rosh, Toch, and Sof. Here he doesn't go into the whole thing. 81 times three is 243. Where do you get 248? It says that's <clears throat> what's called the, the five. What is it? 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 The, the five kindnesses of God. Hey, Chasadim. Okay, you have to understand Kabbalah in order to understand this, and I don't understand Kabbalah, but then, nevertheless, that's what it says. It says these are the, the nine spherot times the nine spherot, which is 81, who is beginning, middle, and end. In other words, each one is times three, that 120, 283, 204, so 243, and then there's five aspects of God's kindness. And anyways, that's what it comes out to. The loche, and therefore, Omer Rizal, the rabbi say, ask him, Misha Bo, the Kamba Talmud, be Happy is a person that after he dies, he goes to heaven, and his learning Torah is still with him. She'al Yudezeb, by means of this, Nasa and Neshama, the soul becomes Gidu Yoter. The soul becomes bigger, more above Harbe Mikamosha Yasatchila than it was in the beginning, before it came into the world. Before it came into the world, it didn't have as much Torah. And now when it learns the Torah, so it becomes bigger. There's other things also that make the Torah bigger. But here the Rebbe is stressing learning the Torah. That's called giving birth. That by means of it nursing from the breasts of his mother, and we said that the breasts of his mother, that's what's called the oral Torah, the interpretation of the Torah, the Talmud. As the ideas that come out, that's like the milk. <clears throat> and that's what it means that he, he comes out, Talmud Biyado, even if you have one sentence, if this grow, makes the soul grow up. Okay, says the Rebbe, one second. After all, the Torah is just a book. 
we, let's understand, how is it possible that by God, that God becomes like a brother and he also nurses from learning the Torah of the Jewish people down here? What's going on? We learn the Torah. The Torah is like milk and the soul gets nourishment. But we're saying that's not the point. The point we're saying here is that God gets nourishment. God gets nourishment. We become like brothers. We're both nursing from the same breasts, the same milk. God gets nourishment from our learning Torah. Does that, I mean, does that make any sense? God is infinite. God really, what's, how can it possibly be that God receives? So, okay, this, that's what this whole thing was based on, is that God reacts and God receives from what we do. This is not necessarily so much of a popular idea. A lot of very religious Jews do not accept this. That's, all, that's one of the novelties that Hasidut Chabad wanted to stress in the world. <clears throat> like I say, it's not a new idea. It's not an invention. Right? The, 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 the Song of Songs is filled with it. The Zohar is filled with this idea of God reacting to us, like a husband and a wife, like a mother and a son. And you were saying like two brothers. And then when we learn the Torah, God also gets nourished, so to speak. We nourish from the same milk. Okay, how can this possibly be? Achainian is like this. Kamoshikatu of Roy Israel. God is sometimes God is called the shepherd of Israel. In in Psalms, Roy Israel Hazinu. Because even it says, Achuti Rayoti. You want to know where that is? Yes, you probably do. Well, I do here. It's in the Psalms. Uh, right in the beginning of the Psalm 80. It says, Achuti Rayoti, my sister, my beloved. But Rayoti can also mean the same words are like a shepherd. Rayoti means that she provides for me. So King, this is also from King Solomon. King Solomon said, Bhati Lagani, Achote Rayati, my my sister, <clears throat> my beloved, but it also means my sister, my provider. <clears throat> okay, now we can say that this is talking about we're talking to God, or God is speaking to us in, in the book of Song, Song of Songs. Is sometimes he's saying it's what we're saying to God, and sometimes it's what God's saying to us. <laughs> Look over it, it changes tense and it changes. Uh, tends is uh, past, present, future, masculine, feminine, plural, singular, right? It, 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 it changes constantly, even in the same sentence. So here, this is God speaking to the Jewish people that we are his sister and we provide for God. Yisrael mefarnesim laviyam mishabashamayim. The Jewish people, we provide for their, they provide for their father in heaven. Now, now, the basis of Judaism is that God is infinite and that God has no form. But on the other hand, here we're saying that that's true. But it also means that God is infinite and he has no form. It means he's not limited to being above the world. He's not limited. That's the Torah explaining exactly how God interacts with the world. Right? You could say, well, if God can be in the world, maybe I can worship a person. Maybe I can worship a tree. You're right, maybe you can, but the Torah says you can't. The Torah says you're not supposed to. That's what God decided. <clears throat> when we learn the Torah, it says we actually feed, we nourish God. We nourish God. How can it possibly be? What happens when a person is nourished? He wakes up, a person that's very sick, a person that's very hungry, right? If it, if it gets out of hand, he's hungry, he can't even move. His muscles are gone, he's just fades away. By feeding a person, the person becomes stronger. He becomes more alive. That's what the Rebbe said, for instance, the fast of Esther. It can't be that the Jewish people fasted before they went into battle. <clears throat> because a soldier has to be <clears throat> nourished. He has to eat. <clears throat> what did Napoleon say? That uh, an army runs on its stomach. And he was an evil person, but he was right. <clears throat> When a person eats, so he's stronger. The same thing is with God. What does it mean when a person is stronger? He can reveal himself more. God is more revealed when he eats. What does he eat? The Jewish people, when they <clears throat> learn Torah, that provides 
nourishment for God. just like bread. The bread, bread, links the soul with the body, right? A person is dying, you give him a piece of bread, and he comes back to life. And also, also, when we provide for God, we draw down the revelation of the infinite, <coughs> the infinite light of God, we draw it down into the ten spherot of Atzilut. We draw it down into what's called the ten aspects of the highest dimension, which is called Atzilut, which that's called Guvin, that's called, so to speak, called God's body. When we say that God creates us in his image, we mean the God's image, how it is in this world of Atzilut, how God, so to speak, comes down to us. <clears throat> but God has to come down, even Chachmielor, even the highest aspect of this world of Atzilut, is incomparable to God's Ein Sof, to God's infiniteness. Who are you, the Esek Torah? How do we bring, so to speak, God? How do we strengthen God that he can be active and come into the world by means of learning Torah? Now, this doesn't really make any sense, but that's how God set the world up. That's how he set the world up. God did personally take the Jews out of Egypt. He did personally give them his Torah. Everyone, the Jews did personally see God on Mount Sinai. It says face to face. And they heard God. So God does come down into the world. But that's all God acting. What about God reacting? So it says since God gave the Torah, so God reacts to what we do. God was reacting before and also. That's why he brought the flood, right? Because everybody was doing sin. So he brought the flood <clears throat> why he chose Noah, says Noah's, Noah found favor in God's eyes, so God reacted. <clears throat> God made a covenant with Abraham, right? God reacted to what Abraham did. That's what it says. That's what it says. Here is our God. We waited for him. It's a book in Isaiah. Isaiah says, one day we're going to say, this is our God. We have waited for him. The revelation, the same revelation as it was on Mount Sinai. That we can draw down, we can actually reveal God from Kivinulo. We hoped for him. The word Kav also means like <clears throat> a, a, a pipe, a pipeline. We drew God down in a way of a pipeline, a revelation, a, 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 um, <clears throat> like, like a street <laughs> coming from one place to another. Hainu, he's Labshusa, or that we can make, actually make God's infinite light be clothed in the ten svirot <clears throat> of Atzilut, which they are in the form of man, right, left, and middle. The three pillars, the three, uh, what do I say, highways. Chesed is on the right, that's the right arm of God, and it's at the left arm of God is his severity. And could, the corresponding to them, that's Torah of order of study. That's why we have this nine times nine, and we multiply it by three <clears throat> in order to get 241, 243, I'm sorry, um, uh, limbs of God. And then there's the five aspects of kindness that that makes 248. Okay, let us see it in the future. <clears throat> Yitkaleh will be revealed. Call them Shachor, everything that we've been learning Torah for all these 2,000 years will be revealed. Therefore, it says, by Yom Ahu, on that day we will see the oneness of God, the revelation of the essence of God, like it was on Mount Sinai, even more, and we will see and feel. Ah, but, Mashinema, what it says, Yonek Shareimi, that we nurse <clears throat> from the breasts of my mother, this is what, Torah Shabal Peh, this, we're specifically talking about learning the Talmud, because the written Torah, this is called Moser Avicha. This is called the, the chastisement, the severities of your father. And the written, the, that's the written Torah, and the, the scroll, the five books of Moses. And the, the oral Torah that explains this, this is called the Torah of your mother. Because the written Torah, everything is very, very terse, very, very tight, like a father. He gives the seed, one little seed. The main growing of the child is in the mother. The same thing God gave the Torah, that's like the seed. Where is the, the will of God and the understanding of what God wants? That's in the mother. What's the mother? That's the Talmud, the revelation of the, of the laws of the Torah. This is in the oral Torah. 
the Talmud, when we learn the oral Torah, the Talmud, the Mishnah, the laws, the Midrash, and when we learn all this, this is and the Arisa, this is the Torah. <clears throat> Arisa, what's called the, the Arisa, that comes from <clears throat> the written Torah, that comes from God's Chachmah. But the, writ, the oral Torah, the explanation of the Torah by the rabbis, that's the Talmud. This comes from what's called Bina, which is called Mother. Says the Rebbe, there's another thing over here. <clears throat> According to Kabbalah, the main revelation of pleasure comes from proper understanding. And understanding is in Bina. Kisha may be in a davar when you understand something clearly. Like it says in the Zohar, Ever a lady who. <clears throat> By means of this, <clears throat> <clears throat> It's like a person, let's say his father, that he's, he's been longing for his father and his mother right, since the Holocaust. He's been separated from them for 30 years. He gives up on them. <clears throat> and one day somebody brings this old couple into his house. He says, who is this? Do you recognize him? I don't recognize him. This is your mother and father. What? You're my mother and father? What's your name? So my name is Reuven. What's your last name? What's your, what's your father's name? Wait, he, he understands. This is my mother and father. Oh, he's so happy. So, but before he understood, he wasn't happy. Why? There, there they were. There was his mother and father that he's been longing for for 30 years, right? And he's been searching. He didn't find them. And they were there. They are right in front of him. But when he understands, that's when he gets the big pleasure. Similarly, the Torah, that's Torah Shabbatav, the written Torah, that's like his mother, <clears throat> his parents, but he doesn't understand them. That's God bringing himself into the world, but he doesn't understand it. By means of understanding, then Nimshach Mimenad is drawn down from God pleasure. This pleasure right now is what's called in heaven, Gan Eden. <clears throat> that we, the, the, the souls get pleasure, it says, from the ray of godliness. And God comes together with the tzaddikim and Gan Eden. All this is by means of the Torah. After a person dies, we, 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 you get a revelation of a little bit of this. But the fact of the matter is the essence of it says is here right now. <clears throat> but that's the thing we don't understand. That's what Hasidut is trying to make us come to aware, be aware of. Okamayim Rizal, like it says, anyone who learns laws every day is promised that he will be Olam Abba. We'll go to Olam Abba, the world to come. Laws, it's explained. So, so what are we saying? Now that there is no holy temple, we want to be again like brothers with God. How do we do it? By learning the Talmud and understanding the ideas of the Talmud. That is a way we can be brothers with God. <clears throat> if you, a person that doesn't learn Torah, so God is still his father, still God is still his mother, God is still his, his friend, God is still is the king. But to be brothers with God, to be in the same the same how do you say uh, <clears throat> same degree level as God is. That God is like our our brother with us, <clears throat> and we feel this commodity. Com what is it? Come, uh, what's the word for it? Uh, com camaraderie. Oh, camaraderie between us and God, like two brothers. We are. <clears throat> that's by learning the Torah, the learning the, the written Torah, by learning the oral Torah, by learning the Talmud and understanding it. <clears throat> okay, we have to understand also that when we learn the Talmud, it's very possible to learn the Talmud and to forget about the forget about God. You can learn the whole Torah and forget about who gave the Torah. It's possible. A person has to sit and think. What are you going to think about? That's the ideas of Hasidut. That's why it's here to tell us that really the essence of God is <clears throat> in these ideas that we learn when we learn the Torah. But that's not enough. There's going to be even more, and that is doing the commandments and working in the physical world that everything we do, see, hear, <clears throat> say, think, even the most mundane things, that we connect that to God, that's also a way to reveal God, bechutz, and that's what we're going to talk about tomorrow. <clears throat> so what are we saying? The Holy Temple was wonderful. <laughs> my, my pleasure, there, Dobby. The Holy Temple, when it was here, nice, we and you too. We and God were like brothers. Now the Temple is destroyed. How do we do it? By learning the Torah. And now we're going to learn the Devar Malchut.
of this week. Don't go away. Here we go. <laughs> 